Welcome to another edition of MCAT Strategy. Today we will be doing Verbal Reasoning Active Strategies Part 2. This is a continuation to my previous video, Verbal Reasoning Active Strategies Hot or Not. I decided to change up the format to use a rating system because hot or not really is a little bit too vague and a lot of strategies f may fall in the middle or lean to one side. So I will be using this rating system uh, for my future MCAT uh, verbal reasoning strategy videos. As always, uh, the ratings are my personal opinion from what I have experienced personally and from watching others. Uh, I encourage you to try out strategies for yourself and see if they work for you personally because different strategies work for different people. And uh, at the end of the day, you can see if you agree with my rating or not. A lot of prep companies have students rank the passages uh, based on difficulty and uh, they usually tell students that there is one killer passage that should be left until the end and should be guessed on. The rationale behind their strategy is to spend more time to maximize the score on other easier passages and to just skip over the killer passage since it will take a disproportionate amount of time for a small yield. However, I am not a big fan of this strategy because it fails to take into consideration several points. First of all, hard passages can have easy questions and beca just because it's difficult to read doesn't mean the questions will necessarily be difficult. Conversely, easy passages can have difficult problem types and it is very difficult to judge the overall difficulty taking into account both the difficulty of the reading and the difficulty of the questions. There is also the fact that on the easier passages there is a diminishing return for your time investment. Uh, the Spending a little bit more time may increase your score on those passages but Overall, if you spend too much time, then you get very little return. Diminishing returns means that the time you put in increasingly becomes less and less valuable, and you get less and less output for the same amount of time you put in. Think about it this way. Is it easier to go from 85 to 90 percent or from 95 to 100 percent? In both cases, you go up 5 percent, but going from 95 to 100 is many times more difficult than going from 85 to 90. So that is an example of diminishing returns. If you were to make guesses at a killer passage, then your probability of getting those questions or getting a good number of questions correct is very low. And educated guesses, uh, probability-wise, are exponentially better than just shots in the dark. Guessing on a killer passage just seems too much like gambling with your score. I think that it's more valuable to aim for a high score and then a fall a little bit short, which is still acceptable. But if you guess, then your score has big fluctuations and you are just as likely to get a lower score than you are a higher score. One reading strategy that some people find helpful is to summarize each paragraph and take some notes uh, while reading the passage. This strategy's rating can either be high if you are taking quick and simple notes, or the rating can be low if it's way too detailed. If you are taking quick and simple notes, perhaps summarizing each paragraph with a single word or one or two key words, then that will not interfere with your timing and it also helps on certain question types such as the main idea problems. However, it is easy to go overboard with summarizing paragraphs or passages and taking notes while reading. If you find that you're running into problems with timing, you should see if you are using the strategy but writing too many details because Often it is the overall picture that is very important and sometimes, a lot of the times, 
some details are not important to answering the questions. And if you are taking too many notes, then that will leave you with uh, with not enough time to do the questions. So if you are running into problems with time using this strategy, uh, try shortening it up or try cutting it all together. The reason I give this warning is because some people take it overboard when they are practicing because they are not practicing under true time conditions. And prep courses also tend to overdo this. If you're going to use this strategy, please use it in moderation. Quick, simple, no fuss. If you do too much uh, note-taking and summarizing, then you are going to run into significant time problems. And I had a friend who wrote his MCAT and did just that, and he ran out of time prematurely. I will have more strategy videos coming shortly. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll do my best to respond to any comments below. You can also leave any requests and ideas for future videos down in the comments section. Until next time, keep on practicing. This is MCAT Strategy, logging off.